The Muslim community here in Canada is a resilient one, and they're stepping up to welcome new Syrian refugees. Next, MTS Popat is in conversation with Azim and Ershad, talking about their common goals. And welcome back to Access TV. This is MTS Poppet. And as you know, the Syrian refugees have started to arrive here in Vancouver. And with me are uh, Muslim Food Bank founder Azim Daya and counselor Ishad Fawcett with the uh, Genesis Family Empowerment Society. Thank you both for being here and salam alaikum to both salam. of you. So, uh, you know, you were here about a year ago, uh, Brother Azim, and uh, you talked to us about the food bank. And you've been dealing with refugees uh, all along because, you know, when the refugees arrive, Arrive, you deal with them uh, with the food bank as well as case management. And But now with these refugees, there's, there's been an onslaught of donations and you've had to expand your warehouse. Tell us how you're coping with this new arrival of refugees. It, it is, uh, it's very exciting. We now uh, have a bigger warehouse. We've, we're trying to double or triple our capacity. And uh, we, we've had a lot of support from the volunteers, from the community, uh, from the general uh, community. And that's very exciting to see. We have now got more than 400 refugees that have come in. We have had, uh, deliver, we've delivered uh, prepared food hampers, welcome kits for, to help them through the two, three weeks uh, interim period where they are trying to settle in and you know, get themselves uh, uh, used to the system here. Uh, so it's very challenging for them. So we are providing them the food hampers, welcome food hampers. We are providing them the, the baby hampers where we have got diapers and f uh, baby food and all that. Uh, we have given them baby clothes. And, uh, and we are mobile, and this all, it's not, as I said, not only the Muslim Food Bank, but a lot of the organizations locally, Muslim organizations, mainstream organizations, churches. So all of us uh, are working together to sell this. Yeah. We, yeah, so we are working with also Immigrant Services Society, and uh, we are co helping them coordinate some of the, in some of the areas. So, so it's very exciting, uh, and we still need more donations, we still need more volunteers. Because we do, uh, as we go on, we will have, we'll from the from the Immigrant Service Society, uh, we'll have our voluntary caseworkers that will be dealing with these uh, yeah. refugees and helping them settle down, get jobs, and help them to get integrated into the community here. So we're really looking for uh, volunteers and uh, donors and supporters. In fact, next weekend we are having a mass volunteer uh, meeting so that we can give different initiatives, uh, give uh, get teams to work on different initiatives. Right, we'll come back to that. But Irshad, you're, you're a counselor. Yes. And you know, we had this recent unfortunate incident with the pepper spray. So yeah. these, these refugees, and you work with refugees from Africa, from everywhere, from and everywhere. so on. Yes. And, and with, so, but these refugees are coming with trauma. Absolutely. So are, are they getting the help they need with the, the trauma they're getting, plus the, the trauma of, of the racial profiling, the Islamophobia they find here? Okay, um, there is, the answer to that is you can think about it two ways, fortunate and unfortunate. Unfortunately, in 2013, the Harvard government cut the grief and trauma program, uh, funding for the program, therefore there is no um, specific grief, uh, trauma counseling or mental health program to serve them. Mm -hmm. on, the other, on the other hand, it, there are private counselors and there is organization like my organization, Genesis. We do provide a trauma, grief and trauma counseling, either for free or for just a small fee now as you, a ten, $10. Now session. you work on, organize a workups, workshop series yes. for frontline workers, yes. case workers in different organizations for uh, competence training tell us about that um, well the workshop is uh, we would like to share the knowledge of our experience working with with the refugee coming uh, with all these traumas so we would like to share it with mental health professionals um, and let them know more about the refugee trauma experience in terms of their mental health, in terms of the trauma experience, in, ter in terms of the grief. Because also their culture is different than the Western culture. Right. And most of the counselors here, their counseling is based on Western uh, counseling approach. Right. And um, the Middle Eastern culture, actually, you don't find counseling 
per se, services available. Therefore, counseling is foreign to these refugee right, newcomers. Right. Therefore, we would like to um, let the mental health professional know more, and hopefully we will give them tools they can implement and utilize when they're working with right. uh, refugees. And the uh, information is available on the website so they can find out more about that. But uh, 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 Brother Azim, you have a fundraiser coming up for the Muslim Food Bank to help you with all these things and you're also the volunteers you're going to have. Tell us about the fundraiser. Yes, uh, we are having a major fundraiser this uh, February 26th, uh, 27th, Saturday. Uh, it's going to be at the Royal Banquet Hall and this is our uh, annual fundraiser. We will also be looking for donations for the Syrian relief emergency relief program and of other programs, the Aspire program, the food bank operations. So this is uh, going to be a very uh, exciting fundraiser and we hope that we will get a lot of support from everyone and be able to raise the money we need to s serve the community at large. Great. Thank you so much for being here.